All right, overflow and underflow. Um, for those of you who don't know what this is, let's do a quick rundown. Uh, numbers inside your computer are stored in binary with a number of bits. So if you have an 8 bits, that allows you to have 0 to 255 if you're doing unsigned. If you're doing signed, then the, one of the bits will represent whether or not the number is negative. And you can get slightly surprising results if you just do binary arithmetic and ignore the, ignore the issue of overflow or underflow. So 255 plus 1 frequently evaluates to 0. 0 minus 1 frequently evaluates to 255. Um, if you're parsing, calculating numbers that are used to index a buffer, this is a perfect way to then trigger the issues we just talked about before. And, before, and just in case you wondered how uh, bad this issue could be, between 1985 and 1987, an arithmetic overflow bug in the Therac 25 radiation therapy machines caused the death of at least six people from radiation overdoses. In August 2016, a casino machine at Resorts World printed out a price ticket of 42,000, uh, 42,949,000 on a machine with a maximum limit of 10,000 payout. Fortunately for them, turns out software bugs win in court, and they just um, <coughs> win in court. And if you've paste, posted your maximum, you just owe the maximum. But it's not all bad. On Lamborghini American Challenge on the Super Nintendo, you could underflow your cash by spending too much money too quickly and wind up with $65,535 in your account because you spent too much. I wish the real world worked like that. So in C, C++, and Go, by default, if you uh, take a, an 8-bit number, um, I've used the uh, standard C int just to uh, make it a little more obvious in the C code that I'm using an unsigned 8-bit number. I add 1 to it. I get 0. I 255. Uh, sorry, 0 minus 1 gives me 255. Same with Go. Now, if you're an experienced programmer, you're used to how this works, no big deal, and you can write some code to catch that if it's important. Not a problem, right? And generally speaking, if you've been programming for a while, you know to do that. That's great. You can build your own seatbelts. Well, I personally like my seatbelts to come in pre-installed. So let's give that a go in Rust. Rust gets halfway here. So let n u8, so a uint 8, just like the others, 255, print n plus 1. Well, this doesn't compile at all, because the static analyzer has figured out that n plus 1 is going to be an invalid number. And so the compiler will actually refuse to compile it altogether. So we got a little tricky, throw in a loop. Now the static analyzer is not analyzing in enough detail, because we want to compile the today, not next week. And unfortunately, following every possible code flow would be a case of cargo build and go on vacation. So we let mutable n equals 0, and we add 1 to it 257 times. And what happens? Well, the answer is, if you're in debug mode, the default, so you've typed cargo run, you get 0 to 255, and then the program panics with the message attempt to add with overflow. So it's Tracking the uh, bit that gets set when you overflow in your CPU, checking it, printing it out. Now this is a slightly slower operation. So in release mode, the compiler optimizes that away. And in release mode, when you do cargo run minus minus release, print 0 to 255, and then 0 again. So the wrapping happened. So you know, I always tell students that when you're in Rust and you're doing arithmetic that might wrap, always run your code at least once in debug mode. Um, I have had production systems surprise me by crashing and showing me that some code that I thought had been working for months did in fact have this problem. Um, it's better to uh, find it, solve it, and not have the problem. So you're a Rust user, but what if you want to overflow? Well, the assumption is that for newer programmers in particular, overflowing might be surprising behavior. And one of the things Rust, one of the uh, core concepts of Rust is, I don't want to surprise you. Your Rust will try not to do surprising behavior when possible if you ignore the syntax, which to many people is pretty surprising. What you could do is write the code we have there on the left. Result equals a plus b. If a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0 and result is less than 0, then we know that it didn't wrap. That works in most languages. That's pretty much in line with what happens when you use one of the libraries that adds wrapping support or um, overflow checks for you. 
Rust uh, decided that we were all sick of typing those, and in the standard library added some checked and saturating arithmetic. So we have this little example here, set n a u8, um, you unsigned 8-bit integer to 255, we call checked add. And checked add returns an option. It'll return sum and the result if uh, the result is valid, and return none if it would have resulted in an overflow. This gives you a way to not panic at runtime, check to see if it happened. But what if I want to wrap, um, want to overflow? That actually, that's quite common in some al algorithms. Some algorithms are built on the assumption that your computer will behave that way, whether it's defined behavior or not. If you ever want to poke at some C++ people, talk about whether or not unsigned integer over, um, over uh, wrapping is in fact um, undefined behavior. Um, wrapping, n dot wrapping add one. You're telling the compiler explicitly, I want wrapping behavior. Wrapping is not an error. And to me, that's great because you are signaling your intent, not just to you, not just to the compiler, but to the guy who comes along a little, um, a few months later, reads your code, is trying to figure out what's going on. He can clearly see that this is what I intended to happen. Likewise, they added saturating add. It's also not an uncommon pattern to say that I can accept up to 255 in this field. If the result would be 280, I still want to keep 255 because I just want to represent that I've hit the maximum value for this type. And that's what saturating add does. So running this little program, first one tells you adding would have resulted in an overflow. You've caught the problem. Using wrapping, you've declared that what you want to happen. Awesome, it wraps. Using saturating, awesome, it saturates up to the maximum. There are additional uh, um, checked, like checked division allows you to uh, perform a division and perform, have to check at runtime for this isn't going to work because dividing by zero is not a good plan. Uh, you can saturating subtract, wrapping subtract, multiply. They're all covered. They're all there, right there in the standard library. There's also an additional type that you can um, write the longer, lo the long-winded wrapping and then the uh, angle brackets to indicate a specialization and a type inside. I personally don't use that because I find the, the function named system a little easier to use. If you prefer the other, it's right there. Hi, I'm Herbert Wolferson, Arden Labs' Rust trainer. If you'd like to see more Rust content, click subscribe to our channel and be notified as it arrives.